Introduction to Spectroscopy Spectroscopy is based on the interaction between matter, say a sample of a molecule that you have and you want to analyze, and light, which is electromagnetic radiation. Light travels in wave packets called photons. This is the equation for the energy of a photon, really. It's two different equations. Energy equals h nu. The drunk V there, nu, is the frequency of the light waves. That's also equal to hc over lambda, where lambda is the wavelength. h is Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. And C is the speed of light, 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So, you can see that frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional to each other. And energy and frequency are directly proportional to each other. So, from this equation we can say... Higher energy means uh, higher frequency, which means a shorter wavelength. Here is a depiction of the electromagnetic spectrum. Notice as you move to the left, frequency is increasing. As you move to the right, wavelength is increasing. This means that energy also increases as you move to the left. The visible region is a very small portion right in the middle. The high energy side of visible is violet at 400 nanometers, that's the shortest wavelength our eyes can pick out, and the low energy side of the visible is red at 700 nanometers, that's the longest wavelength of light that we can pick out. And over here, at lower energy than visible, is the infrared. So we use different regions of the spectrum to get different information about molecules. For instance, NMR uses radio waves way down here at the low energy region of the spectrum, and this tells us the specific arrangement of carbon and hydrogen atoms in a compound. And there are advanced uses for NMR too that can give us um, more sophisticated analysis. IR spectroscopy we're using infrared at higher energy than microwave, so it's a higher energy spectroscopy than NMR. And it tells us the functional groups present in the compound. And this is what we're going to focus on in this section of the class. And then if you use ultraviolet and visible, you can get information about the molecular orbitals in the compound. But we're looking at the functional groups present in the IR. Some principles to keep in mind with IR spectroscopy. As a molecule gains energy, it begins to vibrate. And the vibrational energy levels of the molecules are quantized, that is, they're separated by discrete gaps in energy. If a photon strikes the molecule with the exact amount of energy needed to bridge that gap, the photon is absorbed and a vibrational excitation happens. That means different colors of photons can make the molecules vibrate in different ways. Infrared light causes molecular vibrations when it's absorbed, and different types of bonds absorb different IR energies. That means different functional groups will have characteristic vibrations. Eventually, the energy absorbed is released from the molecule as heat. Here are some different types of vibrations. There are stretching vibrations, 
where the distance between two atoms oscillates as they get closer to each other and farther apart. Think of Hooke's law with a spring. You can also have scissoring vibrations. These are in-plane bending vibrations where you will see the angle, that bond angle there will vary. Then you can have out-of-plane bending vibrations where these things are twisting. But the easiest features in an IR spectrum to pick out are the stretching vibrations.